<laughs> How am I like slide on the couch? <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's Brooklyn Cardenas and Christy Varga. <laughs> and we have some incredible inspiration being here in beautiful Santa Monica. We walked the beach today. We saw some incredible things, yes, right? Yes, yes. Did, did it spark inspiration? Absolutely. Absolutely. One thing I absolutely love just from nature is kind of the reflections you get off of the water here mm -hmm. and the different tones that you're going to see outside. And I really... I'm going to use a lot of that in my inspiration for my color technique. What about you? Well, the beach totally inspires me and it makes me think of like a relaxed luxury, yes. right? Like here in Santa Monica, it's relaxed, but it's still luxurious. And I think that that's what brides and um, special events are all about. Nothing too contrived, nothing formal, just something that kind of like accentuates people's features and just makes them feel really good. And we have a gorgeous guest, Hillary, that's going to come in today. And I think yes. she has a couple events that she's going to. I think so. So I think we're going to have a lot of opportunity to play. Let's get started. Let's do it. Okay. Okay, so this is our gorgeous guest, Hillary, and she's got a couple events that she's going to go to. So Hillary, tell us about your events and what we can do to make you happy. Yeah, so I have two events. Uh, one is a cocktail event. So here's the dress. As you can see, oh, it's got this. Oh, so pretty. Thank you. It's got this high neckline and the shoulders are kind of exposed, but it has these gorgeous ruffles on oh, the back. Oh, wow. So beautiful. Is this event indoors or outdoors? It's outdoors. Outdoors. Perfect. Beautiful. Here in Santa and, Monica? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So I'm wanting something kind of relaxed for that. And then the second event is my wedding. And so I got this oh. dress. It's got a high Victorian <gasps> neckline. Oh my gosh. Wow. And what do you love about it? it? Tell um, us what you love. I love the cap sleeves and I love the neckline, but it's got this crazy cape that I really want to show wow. off. Wow. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And where is this event going to be at? It's here in Santa Monica outside, but I am kind of worried about the wind mm. uh, messing up the hair. So I'm kind of trying to figure out what would be a good style for last and all day. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful dress. You really want to showcase that dress, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, Christy's going to do an amazing color to get you prepped. I'm going to do some incredible styles because we've got two. Yeah. Um, so let's do a proper consultation and figure out what we're going to do. Okay, awesome. All right, let's get started. Okay, so with a great style always comes a great consultation. Um, how do you normally wear your hair? Do you take like a middle part or do you do side part? Uh, middle part or side. You, you'll do middle part or a side. Perfect. So yeah, if you have something tucked kind of like back away from your face, that's really, really nice. Or we could do something where it kind of like loosely kind of like brings this back. Yeah, I like that. And then have like a little bit of volume in through the sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. feels good. Yeah. Beautiful. You like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that looks like really good on your face and it feels like back and away, but still like loose and down yeah, to kind of like cut the shoulders. So that's great that you can do both. Yeah, so we'll make sure that you look and feel great. So we'll work up that. For me, I think the biggest thing is that however you wear your part, you want to wear it that, that day. Yeah. Um, you don't want to switch it up too much. So if you're off center, you're the center, right off center, like I would just do something kind of really, really close um, to the middle. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And then for your second style, tell me what you're thinking. Yeah, so I like... Ooh, like a really beautiful pony. Yeah, but it's still kind of loose, so it still has that feeling that it's down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's like classic and casual all mixed up together. Classy, casual, like yeah. a, a well-done ponytail. See, what I love about that is like you have this like really beautiful cheekbone, so you're either going to want to go really, really high or kind of keep something like really, really low. And I like that and having maybe some like a little bit down like around the face. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like low and loose and tousled. Yeah, I like that. You like that? Mm -hmm. Shows off her jawbone, too. I know. Beautiful. She's so gorgeous, She's right? She's so beautiful. I think that's what it's about, just showing those gorgeous features. So so maybe like a little half up for that first look yeah. and then making it an easy transition into like a like a low, loose pony at the very end. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Christy, right. what do you think? Should what do you want to talk about color? color? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some color. So how often do you typically do your color and get it, get uh, it done? About every 12 weeks. Every 12 weeks? Okay. 
And what do you like the most about your color? Uh, I like when it looks really blonde. Like, I would like it to pop a little bit more. Okay. All right. So I noticed that you have a lot of depth down here in the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you can see that in the mirror, but you yeah. have some beautiful depth and your natural color is really gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, I'm almost wondering if we need to bring some of that up a little bit higher and place that next to some of that blonde so that blonde really pops. Okay. Uh, sometimes, you know, we have blondes who say, I want to be blonder and I can't take you blonder. Your hair will be on the floor. <laughs> um, but if I place some of that darker right next to it, it will really make you feel blonder and pop it a little bit more. Okay. Oh, yes, to go with the style. Uh, so I do think because you're going to wear this part um, probably down in both styles, right? Mm -hmm. um, let's pop these out. Let's get these like little money pieces here. Yeah. Make those bright and really show off your beautiful face, your beautiful cheekbones. And, uh, and it'll help accentuate that style as well. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Sounds great. All right. Little bitty changes. Yeah. Awesome. Hi everyone, so we are gonna get started with our color. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on this front area and we're gonna add some baby lights in there to really make this area pop and have that the most blonde out of the, her whole head. Then we're gonna go in and we're going to add some low lights and create some depth. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go in and add some of my depth into my base area with my 6N and my 7P, making sure I get good saturation on both sides. Love using the Demi because the Demi just works through the hair so nicely and really easy to get the good saturation because of that viscosity. I am going to add one more slice in here. So this I'm is not going to take it. Piece? Yep. Okay. This is going to be my lightener piece. I'm not going to take it all the way up. I just want to give it a nice feather. Uh, and in fact, sometimes my trick is I'll add my base there first so I know stop, stop with the lightener because okay. sometimes I go on autopilot and I forget. Yeah. So I'm just going to apply down further down my section. Okay. And sometimes people get bleeders because they're applying too much product up at the top of their foil. And what's happening is when the, the lightener starts to expand, it starts to push and bleed out of the foil because it has nowhere else to go. We have applied to the front of the section and we have also applied to the back of the section. And now with the remaining product on my brush, I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna do a light tease, tease, tease. And the whole idea is to scoop out. I'm gonna take the end of my weave comb and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna loosen up these areas that I've teased. So it's just not packed in so tight. Then I'm gonna hit those areas with some of the detangler. Um, because it is low in pH, it's gonna help close that cuticle down a little bit so that when I um, hit it with water, it won't open and act like Velcro and attach to each other. Mm -hmm. So that's, a great that's tip. my trick. That was a great tip. For the TZ shadow root, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my product on the front of the section and then to the back of my section. And it's key that you do that first so that you can make sure that that base has the saturation that it needs and that way you're not creating any holidays. Once you have that saturated with whatever is remaining on your brush, you're gonna go ahead and stick that in and you're gonna be making a C motion as you start to tease that down. And what it's doing is it's pulling some of that hair down and tapping it with some of that Demi. So it is creating some of those low lights coming down lower while maintaining some of that diffusion. 
All right, so we just finished her color application and you can see here, we did those baby lights up in the front. You see those foils nice and stacked. And then if she puts her head down, we kind of stopped at this crown area. So we really just focused on this front because when we go in and tone, you're gonna see we're gonna do some dimensional toning where we're going to add a little depth there and then tone out these ends. All right, so we are in our toning time. And one thing that I'm gonna do with her that's a little different than maybe what you're used to as far as the toner goes, is I'm gonna take her back to my station so I can have her sitting up and I can make sure that I'm gonna give attention to these areas that I just highlighted and then give attention to these areas that I really want to add some of that dimension. Um, if I have her laying back in the wash house, I tend to just do a one size fits all and I you know, spread that color all over and I can't really pick and choose where I want my deeper toner to go versus my lighter toner. So I always bring them back to my chair, have them sit up so that I can really go through the hair and apply where I want it to apply. Um, one thing I don't know if you guys saw that I did was the hair was kind of dripping um, with water coming out and that is a very good indicator that the hair is too wet. Um, if you have any drops coming out of the hair, that means that the hair is too full of water. So when you put your toner on top of it, it's not going to accept that toner. All right, so we're gonna start. I have her parted off into four standard segments here. And uh, up here where I did this baby light, I just wanna do a little tap tap with a little bit of that base, just to kind of give it a nice little blend. And then on the rest of those areas, in a moment, I'm gonna pull that 10P all the way through. Now I chose 10P because I really wanted to uh, neutralize out any of those unwanted warm tones, as well as adding some of that pearl and iridescent tone to it. Um, like Brooklyn and I were talking about earlier, we love that iridescent, how it kind of pulls some pinkies and then pulls some purples if you're you know, turned the other way. So just utilizing that pearl to really get a nice end result. All right, so just coming up through here, giving that a tap. Now, do I go in and tap at that base every single time with some, uh, with my base formula where I have my baby lights? Not necessarily. It kind of depends um, what it looks like after I get them out of, get her foils out, all washed out. Um, if I feel like I want a little bit more of a smooth transition um, from that base to that line of demarcation or the line that the baby lights ended, that's when I'm really gonna go in there and give it that softening effect with that toner. Now, when I'm going in with my toner, I can go in with bigger sections than maybe I would normally apply because I am dealing with hair that is damp. So the product is gonna move through that hair a little bit more easily than it would if it was dry. Now, the key here is you don't wanna go too big to where you are not getting the saturation that you're looking for. Okay, and then anytime, if I encounter an area where maybe I feel that I want just a little more of that depth brought down, I'm gonna just tap that area as well. So really customizing this toner and giving the hair what it needs and letting the hair dictate what that tone should be or what toner should be used. One thing I love about our Paul Mitchell tint brushes is that they have these bristles that are nice and strong and can act like a comb there when I'm trying to work that product through the ends. So it kind of gives me one less tool that I have to hold on to. All right, so I'm gonna work back through this top area here. She had such a beautiful lift that I really don't need to neutralize a ton of warmth out of her hair. She lifted so nicely. So I love that because now this P, my 10 P, my pearl, has the opportunity to really go in there and give it a nice, cool end result. Um, sometimes I like to layer how much of that darker toner or lighter toner I'm using. So depending on, upon where I am in the hair, uh, maybe I want to just deposit a little bit more depth in some areas, um, maybe all the way through or halfway through the mids. Um, so I can kind of blend these two toners together 
So I've got my light toner here and then I'm kind of just marrying it to that darker tone so that I get that nice seamless blend. I wanna be very careful at this top here. I don't wanna take sections that are too big, um, especially if I'm adding a base in there because that base, I have less control the bigger I go with my section size. All right, so let's talk about timing with the Demi. So, you know, the Demi's uh, typical processing time is 20 minutes. Now, when you are using it as a toner, uh, you really do wanna keep an eye on it and make sure that you are watching that hair actually tone in the moment. Uh, like we said earlier, porous hair can accept that color faster or that pigment faster, making it uh, maybe grab a little bit darker. So definitely just keeping an eye on it and seeing where that hair wants to go with it. All right, so that completes her toner application. And now we're gonna let this process for about 10 minutes and definitely keeping an eye on it, making sure it's not grabbing those pigments too much. So we'll see you in a bit. Good. Are you so happy? Yeah, I love how the blonde really pops now. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. All right, stay tuned because we have a second look coming your way. Mm -hmm. 